Hello, my name is Darren Arcaro, and I'm a PhD candidate in Ethnic Studies at UC Berkeley, also pursuing the DE in Gender and Women's Studies. So I was asked to respond to the same questions that Meg and Sarita thoughtfully answered in their videos, um, the first one being, what does an ideal faculty graduate student mentorship look like? And Meg had mentioned having open and honest conversations about career plans, mental health issues, and other issues that may pop up for students pursuing careers outside the tenure track position, and how these conversations should happen often to reduce the stigma around those topics. And Sarita has this thing very interesting that I agree with wholeheartedly about how there should be an acknowledgement early on in the graduate and student career about um, the ideal work-life scenario after graduation and also how there should be regular conversations about pedagogical and philosophical experiences of their students and always viewing their students as teachers. And what that really signals to me is a mentor who um, is able to see their graduate students as whole people first, uh, a mentor who realizes that graduate students bring experiences with them that inform their graduate degree. And also a, a mentor who um, realizes that the baggage that graduate students bring to the table um, may also affect them in negative or positive ways while pursuing a degree. And what I mean by this is um, my background in being the first uh, in my immediate family and extended family to pursue a graduate degree, let alone a PhD, uh, a lot of fears and insecurities of whether or not I could actually do it. Um, and you know, knowing that imposter syndrome was something I experienced on a daily basis my first two years, and it's something that I still experience on the regular now, um, is, is important to have a mentor who can listen to those experiences with an open heart rather than with judgment and help you move through them rather than get stuck in having to do that emotional labor by yourself. Um, that doesn't mean that your uh, mentor should be your therapist as well, but they should also be able to listen to you and hold those um, insecurities and help you move through them. Your mentor should also be somebody who um, gives you a level of transparency of things that happen on the faculty level within your department uh, and within your university setting. I think oftentimes um, graduate students feel slated when they hear about news that affects them negatively when um, the feelings that that negative news can bring could have been mitigated if there was open and honest communication early on in the process of um, relaying that information to graduate students. Um, you know, having these types of conversations about what happens at the faculty level with graduate students um, shows them and is a signal that, you know, they belong in this community and that they their worth is valued far beyond what they can produce as scholars and far beyond what they produce as workers for the university. Um, this level of belonging and feeling like you belong, I think, is really hard to cultivate and hard to practice. Um, and it's something that faculty, I believe, needs to be um, worked on a little bit more. The second question, um, given this ideal mentorship model and your position within the university, to what extent are you responsible for developing diverse skill sets, experiences, and opportunities that go beyond traditional conceptions of doctoral work? Um, responsibility, do I feel responsible? No, I've always felt inclined to, to look for opportunities outside of uh, the PhD and tenure track position. And I think that has a large part to do with um, the fact that my grassroots activist experiences is what made me want to get a PhD in ethnic studies. And a lot of the students that get funneled into this department or in this field um, are students whose uh, academic work is informed highly by the work that they've done on the ground level. Um, so for me, it always became uh, natural to develop those skill sets. So for example, my second year when writing my master's exam, I also pursued a position with a nonprofit in the Bay Area to write a report on um, LGBT movements in the South focusing on queer people of color. Um, and, you know, what was really neat about that experience is, is that what I was doing research in in the nonprofit space also informed my PhD research on um, queer people of color um, in the South and also queer people of color within uh, religious movements. Um, so that was really exciting. I think it's really important to make sure that whenever you are developing um, skill sets that make you, um, I guess, 
marketable outside of the academy to make sure that it's something that doesn't detract you away from your graduate work, um, but also supports it in a way that is productive for both your academic job trajectory and also um, your personal life and what makes you happy.